Hi and good evening. It's Lisa Loring. How are you? I'm going to do the reading for Saturday. It's technically Saturday already, but um, I haven't gone to bed yet. And for those of you who know me, if I haven't gone to bed, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. But um, yeah, so it's, I'm going to do the uh, tarot card reading for Saturday, May 29th. It's 29th, yeah. And I'm going to use a card deck I haven't worked with in a really long time. And to be very honest with you, um, I while I've been on hiatus, um, there's only a couple of decks that I've been really um, kind of stuck with working with. It's the Kuan Yin Oracle card deck by Elena Fairchild. The other one is the Rumi Oracle card deck. And it's been a fantastic one. And Oracle cards are a little di are different. Not just a little, but a lot different from tarot. Um, you can use them a lot. I find that they're useful as a commentary on the tarot. If you are, you know, like a final reflection or something like that. Um, kind of like yesterday's reading where I used Kim Kranz's um, Animal Spirit deck. So at any rate, um, I'm going to use the Crystal Visions deck. I have not touched this deck in many, 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 many months. So we'll see what, what um, comes up. Um, when you want to use a deck maybe you haven't used with used for a really long time, it's great to clear them. Not that the energy in the house is bad or anything like that. Um, in fact, you know, I do a lot of saging and things like that. Saging is always good. But you can take the deck in your non-dominant hand. For me, my non-dominant is my left hand. And then with your dominant hand, knock the deck three times. So cleanse and clear any energy that is still hanging in this deck from the last time I used it. Energy, any energy that's hanging around. And the other thing you want to do when you do a reading is center yourself and breathe into your heart. So I'll do that while I shuffle. And I did not pull the cards on camera last time. And I actually want to make sure. Yep, we're going. I just want to make sure that um, I actually do that tonight, which I didn't last night. But tonight I will pull the cards. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and um, angle the camera down. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm not a really good shuffler or anything like that. I have no, no, Vegas is not going to be asking me to come and do any kind of card dealing there. So again, you don't even have to, you know, that's another, you know, thing. You don't really need to know how to be a great shuffler in order to be, to read your tarot cards. And tarot, as I've often reminded people, is not witchcraft. It's not um, dark arts or anything like that. It's really just meditation on artwork and the symbolism that you see in the cards. So I center myself as I prepare to read this reading. I feel the energy is really good. I feel a good energetic flow in my body right now as I breathe in. And I ask for the messages that are for all zodiac signs Call in all my guides, my angels, dear Lord, dear Jesus, Mother Mary, Holy Spirit, guide me in this reading, give me messages to share with the collective. What are the blessed messages that are coming forward for Saturday, May 29th? And here's one right here. We have, oh, the Nine of Pentacles. There's a cheek rate. Nine of Pentacles. Let's do another card. We'll have three cards tonight. I do like this deck. It's a very sweet, sweet deck. What are the other energies for Saturday, May 29th? This is a really nice story. I don't know what it's really called. A Ace of Cups. That's a nice one. That's the central card of the reading. Hmm, what's the moon symbolism on that top? Oh, and I love the dragonfly on that. The um, 
stem of that chalice. Beautiful transformation. Kind of transformation. Get a lot of What's the final card before I get too invested in the ones that are in front of me? Maybe one more final card. Some spirits, my guides. Ooh, final lots of cards. Well, I guess we'll take them. There's four cards that just came out. Bottom of the deck, Wheel of Fortune. That one really stuck out at me when I was, oh, you know why? Ha! Huh? Because it's the bottom of the box, but I was really kind of like entranced by it. And this dragon on the top. Anyway, we'll get into the cards that we have here. So let's angle the card. I'm going to angle the camera down so we can look at the um, cards themselves. We've got the Nine of Pentacles, and the Nine of Pentacles is a card of of independence, of it's the nearing the completion of the suit of pentacles. Any of the suits have a an ace to start and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, going all the way up to ten. And then you have your court cards. With the nine, you're almost at the end of the suit. You know, there's still the ten of pentacles to go, so you still have one more beyond this, but the nine is someone who's worked really, really hard. You've worked hard to get where you are in a very physical way. The suit of pentacles is a suit of the 3D, something that's happening in the material reality. Things that have are very clearly manifest, things that are tangible, concrete. They involve health, you know, your, your actual health going on in current reality. Um, finances, career, work in general, anything of value, anything of value, and that can be a relationship, as well as, you know, possessions or jobs or things like that. And in this one, our woman has, she's got this interesting... I don't know what she has in her hand, some kind of ball or like an apple or something like that. So she has everything she needs. She's got a peacock next to her, right? And I love the arc. Each, each of these almost, each of these pentacles, the arc of them almost has like a different gem in each of the pentacles. So she's got all the, all, everything she needs, you know, is at her disposal. She lives in a very beautiful place. The, you know, she's mastered herself so much so that this tiger is super comfortable being with her. And the tiger's relaxed and she's got her hand lightly on the tiger. She's kind of reminding me of Archangel Ariel a little bit. Um, what does she have in her hair? Peacock feathers in her hair. You know, she's well dressed. And yeah, I would say that it's an apple or something, one of these pieces of beautiful fruit that's in the trees, you know, there's nothing that, the, she's in a kind of a veritable garden of Eden. She's got the green man here, the symbol of the green man. You know, she's very comfortable in nature. There's no, you know, she doesn't look incongruent, despite she, the fact that she's the only human in the image, in this artwork, the only human which is very typical of the Nine of Pentacles woman. It's usually a woman who's depicted. And in this deck, it's no different. And, you know, it's like almost like, you know, I'm get what I'm getting. I'm getting an Eve vibe, but, you know, Eve not vilified or having been the cause of the downfall of Adam. She's got that apple in her hand but no one's kicking this lady out, All right? So in the Ace of Cups, you've got your Ace of Cups, which kind of, which goes really well with this, you know, singular, very um, self-possessed person who we see in the Nine of Pentacles. The Ace of Cups is always 
a sim is usually a symbol of a very full chalice. You know, you you filled up on your own again, very self possessed emotionally. Particularly, the suit of cups is something that would something that generally goes along with the, you know our emotional life, our feelings. And again, this is someone who's really come into her own, on her own, and is so calm that the birds are flitting around her and are bringing her things. And this, you know, peacock is hanging out with her and the tiger is completely relaxed. You know, this is, this is someone who's in, who is in a position of self-mastery on every level who would be coming into any situation with a full cup. And as I was talking earlier, this, the stem of this chalice has, I've never seen it done like this before, has the dragonfly, which is a symbol of transformation. So, you know, this person has undergone, you know, tremendous transformation in order to be this full. And she's not only full, like the, part of the, um, Part of the idea of a chalice is also, you know, speaking of the divine feminine, and this doesn't really necessarily have to always be, it's a celebration of the divine feminine. It's a celebration of the feeling life that is within all of us, which is the divine feminine, whether you're male, female, what, however you identify yourself. We all have a masculine and a feminine. The moon symbolism on the chalice also is that and actually, our darker side is the feminine side. It's the least known and can be kind of wild, you know, because we don't want to approach our feelings. So it can feel like a, an, un, an uncertain place. It can feel very um, unknown to dive into your feelings. I had a lot of things come up for me today. And, you know, I kept kind of like going in, going in and going in. And yeah, it kind of felt like a dark place um, only because... I just didn't really, you know, it was like a little bit of a labyrinth, a little bit of a maze, you know, not particularly well illuminated. And even in this Ace of Cups, there's not a tremendous amount of illumination as opposed to what we see here in the Nine of Pentacles card. There is this twilight kind of place where you have to be in order to face your feelings and your emotions and be willing to learn about them. You have to sit quietly, you know, in this kind of quietude, very peaceful, coming out of the lotus. Lotus is often a symbol of meditation and, and meditative kinds of practices. So what I'm, what I'm seeing so far before we get into this pile here is that, you know, to be in this kind of this self-possessed place externally, we have to be willing, this is the central card of the reading, we have to be willing to be still, to learn about how we feel. Otherwise, there's no way we can behave externally and in any situation as calmly as this woman is doing in the Nine of Pentacles. She's done this work. And this is the work that's required of us. In order to be successful in our all of our doings and to have the kind of beautiful life that we really want we really have to be willing to be quiet and still and be with our feelings and transform use our feelings to transform our external circumstances really express our feelings that's the expression of feelings and expression of self. That's that over, cup overflowing. But the cup is not only just, the cup is not just full. Like it constantly can be, it's always receptive. So you're not only just so full that you can't take anything in. You're actually, a, a chalice is something that lets out as well as lets out enough so it can bring more in. It's always willing to accept. That's part of the divine feminine, right? So what do we have here? So this that came out. So we have another nine. We got the nine of cups, another card of emotion, and someone who's sitting there, like I said, willing to blow on dandelion. Just kind of relax and be with the feelings and be with that full feeling, that self-satisfied 
again, self-possessed of self-mastery of the emotional life. Feeling full, feeling relaxed, feeling at ease. And it's, again, another twilight kind of situation. The, the I like that these are in the twilight because the divine feminine also is associated with the powers of the West, which is, you know, your sunrise. It's that closing of the day. It's that satisfied place at the end of the day where, you know, you're, you're, admiring you you're just receiving all of the work that you did in the course of a day so at the end of the day you're and and it's getting dark so we're going into that darker time where you know you're going into a rest more restful kind of place more receptive kind of mindset and of course then to sleep another pay another cups card we have page of cups so we've graduated from the Nine of Cups to the Page of Cups, which is a court card, right? And here again, she's looking at the lotuses. Lotuses are very prominent in the in this particular deck, in the cups, car, cups suit. The Page of Cups is receiving information. Pa the, the pages are messengers, so they're giving and receiving information again that give and take that being open to receive as well as being satisfied and full Oops, sorry but turned that around she's looking at the light from within that lotus very meditative in order to receive these messages though again finding that still point the the, the emphasis is definitely about being willing to be still enough to hear, to receive, to daydream, so to speak, to just be relaxed, to know that you're enough, that you don't have to go around and, and go searching for anything. Each of these people, are, they're all very, there's, they're individuals. They're all very, there's nothing going on around them except, with the exception of the page, with the, excuse me, the Nine of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. There's a lot of activity going on around her, but it's natural. It's There's no other people she's interacting with. This is her and nature. She's in a natural setting. She's in a natural state. In order to find your natural state, you've got to be willing to do these other, this, these other kinds of still practices. Now, the other cards that came out with this are um, very different than the other cards. You know, we have a we have some con a little bit of conflict, right? We got a seven of wands and the four of pentacles. The seven of wands is defending beliefs, standing up for what you believe in, which you may have to do. But in order to know what you believe in. You know, you got to do the work of, we, we have to do the work. We have to be willing to sit with ourselves, to take that time at the beginning of a day and at the end of a day. You know, to do it at the end of the day, taking in that inventory of what the day was. And at the beginning of the day, taking that quiet time to be in a place of gratitude for all that we have recognize how far we have come and then then be willing to look at you know where we can eat we can go even further by getting more comfortable in our own skin being at ease with ourselves so we actually do know what we believe in so we don't end up here which is the four of pentacles and you know this little love is just holding on for dear life you know, she's holding on to everything so valuable. Like she doesn't have she, very opposite of these other kinds of cards, and you know, very opposite of a person who is not only full and happy with what they have, but willing to take a take in more to let some things pass out in order to accept something new and more. So the the energy of the day to me. Um, you know, we have the option of, you know, I, we definitely need to, you know, start the day off by being in gratitude, seeing how far we've come, recognizing the good work that we've done, 
recognizing that there's there's more to come because we're, like I said that ten of Pentacles is the next card and that's that ten is the final card in the suit before you get to the court cards and that's that place where you know you you looking around you have all the material possessions you've done all that you're really really satisfied with what you've built so this is the nine of pentacles. So, you know, recognizing, oh man, I have so many beautiful things and I've done so many beautiful things and I have, you know, a lot of fire friends. I have everything I need and I'm going to even have more. Being able to accept more is being able to let something out of this chalice in order to accept that more so we don't end up in this four of pentacles kind of place, you know where your arms, you don't even have an arm or a hand free to pick up the beautiful crystals that are right at your feet. She's so busy holding on to these, you know, the, the you know, what she knows that she's not even willing to look down and see that more is growing right at her own feet. She can't even possibly pick them up because maybe, you know, she's looking at things from only one perspective, standing in beliefs, check your beliefs looking and seeing how you actually feel about things, what you're really passionate about. Does it make sense? Are you willing to open up your belief system a little bit in order to put some things down, in order to bring some new things in, bring some in some new ideas, new, you know, maybe a, a new kind of business that you wouldn't have even thought of because she's so busy holding onto the pentacles that she doesn't know that maybe she could go into the crystal business right? Or doesn't see the gems and the treasures that are right there. And she's like hung up in that tree also. Like she's not even willing to come down from that tree. I also noticed that he seems very high perched. He's really very, very defensive. So I think the, me the, the message is, is let's, you know, maybe not get so defensive or, you know, check what we're being defensive about can we let down can we put down our sword can we put down our shield is that really safe do we are we self-possessed enough that we can put those down and we can accept up the viewpoints of other people or should try to do something a little bit different than we normally would can we put some of that stuff down some of the old armor that maybe doesn't really work for us anymore or does it really you know maybe maybe you encounter somebody who you know you maybe you do need to um you know, maybe that you're encountering somebody who is like this and you got to be a little defensive. But my advice would be to maybe chill out with that a little bit. Be open. Let in what you need. What, let in what you need. Let out what you don't need. And then constantly, again, be grateful for what you have. Check in at the end of the day. How have I made this day better? What has, how has this day made me better? I think we'll leave it at that. Um, actually, maybe I'll do one from, uh, you know what, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that tonight. So thank you for joining me. If you like this reading, um, definitely like. I know that that's a thing with YouTube. Um, but definitely, if you're on YouTube, definitely like. Um, subscribe, if, subscribe to the channel. If you want a private reading, um, just put it in the comments. Um, or feel free to email me at lisa, L-I-S-A, dot loring, L-O-R-I-N-G, at gmail.com. Have a great day.